Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to present one of America's best-selling authors, and uh, you mention this woman's name and you're in for a very vigorous conversation, especially among her untold, uncounted numbers of followers. Here is philosopher Ayn Rand. Miss Rand. <laughs> nice hand. Um, millions... Thank you. Gosh, uh, millions of Americans uh, really were introduced to Ayn Rand in The Fountainhead, 1943. Atlas Shrugged, 1957. That's it. Still selling worldwide. You are something. Uh, I think so. Well, you know, philosophy, uh, you do think so. Yeah, but You're tired yeah. of all this aw shucks humility. That's phony, you think, huh? That's right. So I better get off my kick, huh? Oh, you're not too humble. So, not, <laughs> you can see a little... Uh, a little reluctant attempt. Yeah. that you make once in a while. But I don't fool you? N not too much, no. Okay. Uh, what's your point? That uh, That's a phoniness, isn't it? That uh, enjoy whatever it is that's going on, huh? Yes, if you've honestly achieved it, and I know I have and I think you have, then you should be proud of it. It helps other people, actually, to know that you've achieved something, it was worth it, and you're pleased yeah. with it, rather than crawl around and say, poor little me. Yeah. Where did we get into that? Oh, shucks, it was nothing. I just hit a Grand Slam home run in the last night. I have a job to do. I went up there and I just swung at the ball and I hit the bat. And you know, Why do we do that? Why don't we say, I did it because I'm good and I work hard? That's exactly it. Yeah. How do you suppose we got into this phony uh, baloney? Stuff? Oh, America? Because I think most men here are repressors. They hide their feelings, particularly... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, I think... Most people have had the same experience or made the same observation. Yeah. That men in America think it's a mark of strength never to show your feelings. And it becomes a psychological repression, which is a very mm. deadly yeah. psychology. It uh, makes women terribly unhappy. We seem, however, to allow for uh, a touching and everything else. I mean, uh, what what more wonderful embracing have we ever seen than the hockey players gave each other when they defeated Russia? Oh, well, that's a rare exception. Yeah, but I, it, it, is, and, it is... And it's proper. Why shouldn't it? Well, of course it is. I'm not challenging that. I'm saying, why do we have this, we have this dual set of behavior uh, standards? One is, don't show your feelings. If you're hit by a pitch, I remember whenever the ball player would hit, he, when I was a kid, he never went like that. You know, he'd run to first yeah. base and never touch it. And I'd think, oh boy, is he strong. Now I see that as your point, that it's a sort of tyranny that men are not supposed to uh, express. Uh... Yes, and it's sort of weakness. It's not strength. Because the strong man doesn't mind showing his feelings, unhappy ones, or pain, mm -hmm. or enthusiasm, or pride. Mm. But in the, uh, trying to appear strong, most men lose the, the pleasure of b being boastful. I don't mean boastful. I mean legitimately acknowledge their own uh, achievement and that they take pleasure in it. They take pleasure in in not acknowledging their own achievement. You're saying? No, they're afraid to admit okay. that that they enjoy acknowledging yeah. their own achievement. So what? Why is that important? Let's. I, I'm not sure I understand the consequence of this suppressed. Uh, kind oh, of feeling. why? Which are you asking me? Why is it important? Yeah. To... Well, for example, let's talk about the president for a moment. Uh, if, if I'm understanding you, one of the points you'd like to make is that you want to see a president joyful at victory, able to, if not jump up and down, manifest his joy, huh? Yes, sir. Spare you the tough uh, person who goes through the leadership role, um, never smiling, huh? Uh, that wouldn't quite apply to the present president. No, you know? no, it wouldn't. <laughs> so you must be encouraged by Mr. Carter's uh, response to his own feelings. I, I see. I think his smile is genuine, don't you? No. I, I, think, I think it's conditioned. He, he now, if you watch him, he smiles when he's saying something serious. And it's almost like, like a nervous reaction, you know. Mm -hmm. He just smiles. <laughs> oh, my God. I forgot that I'm on TV. Yeah. Well, that's all right. Well, don't forget you're on TV. But... Uh, <laughs> No, but he is not a strong personality. Yeah. And uh, nor is he showing genuine emotion. Uh -huh. I don't think he has any ideas, and if so, he has no feelings. Okay. 
Uh, isn't this a little dangerous, though, analyzing people via television? I mean, I don't know if I'd want you out there talking about me on the basis of what you see on television. Oh, you wouldn't regret it, but I think you're right to some extent. Uh, I shouldn't ex uh, go into psychology of yeah. public figures. Yeah. Because only they, only they and their psychologists can know the full truth. But you know, television is very revealing. A failure what? Television is very revealing. You can tell a lot about a person. You can? Oh, yes. More than in a personal encounter. I don't think you can tell a lot on the basis of one, one appearance, actually, do you? No. And, and also, I think it's hard to read people who are in uh, actor roles, who are uh, abiding by a script and the discipline oh, of no. another creative person. No. But I do agree. I think if you watch a person on a talk show, for example, over any period of time, you get to know them, don't you, don't you think? I think so, yeah. Um, I read an article about uh, an interview that uh, Jerry Schwartz of the Atlanta Constitution wrote uh, in which you said you were all over the lot. You, know, uh, you liked Charlie's Angels. Yes. Uh, but you, uh, because why? Uh, because it's the only romantic television show today. It's not realistic. It's not about the gutter. It's not about the, the half-wit, retarded children and all the other kind of shows today. It's about three attractive girls doing impossible things. And because they're impossible, that's what makes it interesting. It shows three young girls who are better than so-called real life. Yeah, and you like and that's that. that's a romantic uh, school of literature. Yeah, you want art to be romantic, don't you? Oh, sir. You're not crazy then about art which reflects life. Not the life of the moment. Well, I want art that reflects life long range. All right. You're an Aristotelian, you're, you're an Aristotle devotee more than a Plato devotee. Oh, God, yes. Uh -huh. I'd be happy to tell you why, but we just don't have time. Uh, <laughs> I don't mean to be... Uh, I can tell you in one okay, good. sentence. Okay, good. Because he is a defender, upholder, and advocate of reason. Aristotle. Aristotle. And the father of logic. Plato is the opposite. Yeah. Uh, translating some of your many writings into every day, let's see if we just can't get up. Let me break here just a moment. Can I stay up here for just one other break, and then I promise we'll have a chance. We're in Chicago with Ayn Rand, the philosopher. Objectivism, you've heard of that. Many of you have read uh, her works, and have, uh, there, are, there are countless people who say their lives have been changed after reading Ms. Rand's uh, work. What do you think? We hope you'll join us. Thank you.